How are you, buddy? I'm fine. How are you? And who are you? Who are you? I'm, I'm Tim. I'm, What's your name? Uh, I think it's Chris Kelly. Is that? Are you Chris? Are you Billy? Are you? Yes. You are. You're all the above. I'm all of them. How weird is it to be sitting back here, across from each other with microphones? After 30 years, it's pretty darn weird. Well, you know. You know, we did this for a living at one point in time. Was it a living? It, was, it wasn't a living. <laughs> it wasn't it was, much it was of a, a living. It was a job. It yeah. Was, wasn't much of a living. But uh, <laughs> but yes, it's been 30 years since you and I have played on the radio. It is. And, this is uh, and Tim and Chris 30 years after the fact. Mm -hmm. You said 30 years after tour. <laughs> so is that what we're going to call it? Places. This is the old fart tours. So. Yes. yes. No, we used to do. This is so weird. And this is why I wanted to get together with you. Because mm -hmm. there's. Uh, you and I have known each other forever. I just came for the coffee. Well, right. hell, have yourself. About all this. But, you know, we've known each other forever. We mm -hmm. ended up doing a uh, little radio show. What was it, 92? 93? It was Chelsea, 90. Well, Chelsea I, was four or five, and she's like 30-something now. And let's see. It was probably, I started I started WTAK in 87, and I worked there for about a year, and Butch, Butch fired me. Good old Butch. Yeah. Butch fired everybody at he one did. time. And then uh, I was gone until around April. That was right before Christmas. And I came back in April, and I worked there for, I did mornings with uh, Tom Kelly. Was that on Stringfield, the old yes. station? Yes. And Boy. then the station moved to Madison. Mm -hmm. And then you showed up. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I need a and job. They, they, they asked me about that. I said, don't you know this guy? I said, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, so you and I did an afternoon gig together. No, we did mornings. I mean mornings. Yes, yeah. we did mornings. Yes, yeah. yes, mornings. I remember it like it was 30 years, 30 years ago. ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. We did some crazy stuff. We did. Therefore, Do you remember any of the things that we did? We, remember uh, Crash Pittman, the helicopter uh, traffic guy? Every time he'd go up, he'd crash. Yeah. Crash remember Pittman. That. Remember, our, remember <laughs> we had a mascot. <laughs> we did. We had a mascot that uh, was, our, was our radio station uh, cow. Yes. And we had him killed off. Yeah. Because he went up with crashes. <laughs> he <laughs> fell out of a helicopter. And he fell out. Yeah. And when he fell out, the next day we had a hamburger cookout at our Oh, that's right. at our radio station. And 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 I'm not going to mention what restaurant was across the street, but it was it had these two golden things like this. Yeah. And um <laughs> people called they called the cops. Because people were parking in their parking lot to come over and get our hand. Come over and eat our cow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember the policeman walked up to us, and he, he looked at me and goes, what are you doing? We're cooking. I said, we're having a cookout. Yeah. One of Amber? And he, um, I, I told him, I said, we're, we're giving away hamburgers, but we're asking for donations for some charity. We're, for us, for actually. Us. Yeah. yeah. For the, for the for Tim the, and Chris got to eat. <laughs> yeah. Char charity event. <laughs> but, um. So anyway, so he just kind of shook his head and walked out. Yeah, that, but I remember that very. Distinctly. Well, yeah. Here's here's the thing that I because you you and I we go we go way back. I mean, we met in Decatur. Holy crap! When did when did uh, 1980 and Emma at WMSL? Mm -hmm. Because I I graduated high school in 1978. Holy crap! Wow, you're old man. I, I know. I look <gasps> at I see my dad every time I look in the mirror. But I I all through high school I I just wanted to be Doctor Johnny Fever. Uh -huh. Remember WKRP in Cincinnati? I do, yes. So, I, was about six, I mean, I, I got my first uh, radio job. I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Donovan. Remember Bill Donovan? I do. Nice man. I Be like nice. Yeah. Uh, wait, I love Bill. I do too. Um, Bill Donovan had just, I think, graduated from college, came back to Athens and took over the family radio business. At the time, it was WJOF, which was is now DRM. Right. And uh, WMSL. No, that was Decatur. This was WJMW. Yeah, JMW. Yeah. So I, I have, yeah. I'm not going to mean to interrupt. I have, yeah. I found three JMW t shirts. I'm going to bring you one. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to work there when I was 17 doing the afternoon shift at the AM. And the afternoon shift meant I came in whenever. Uh, Bob Donovan, who was Bill's daddy, who was doing the afternoon shift, yeah. <laughs> whenever Bob was ready to go home, <laughs> I would go in and just be on the air until sign off. Gotcha. And so that was my first radio gig. Well, then when, when Bill came and took the family business over, that's when he changed the country over to ZYP. So it's not DRM now, it's ZYP. Right. And so I remember that was my first real exposure to professional radio. Because they were all these uh, computers and all this kind of stuff. So I, I know. Yeah. So I was there about six months, and then I came to work in Decatur at 
WMSL doing, I think, 6 to midnight. Yes. And I remember walking in my first time over there, and there's this this short fellow with big blonde hair. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm Chris. Uh, Billy Casey. Billy Casey. That was Billy Casey. And so that was my, and, and you and I ended up actually living together with, with probably. It was platonic. Uh, it was completely platonic, but the, sure the best that. thing about that era, because I was, I don't know, I was 18, 19. You, uh, were, yeah. you were a little bit older, not much. Um, the thing that I remember most is we lived on beer and mayonnaise and crackers. And we got all our drugs free because we let one of the biggest dope dealers in town, Tom, sleep on our couch. Now, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Where I, is I Tom? I, 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 don't, I was going to ask, how is Mr. Tom? I don't even know if Tom's still alive. I haven't talked to him in years. I haven't talked to him. But, in, uh, but that was a fun time because I would be on the air from 6 to midnight, and you would come in at midnight, and I'd just hang. Remember Tom would be on the air, and he'd call that. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah. yes. And so you, that you was, would hang out. You would hang out, and you, or we'd pass each other, you know, in the hallway. Yeah, yep. And uh, and I tell you, you need to take trash out or something. You yeah. Know, and you'd go home. You tell me to quit eating all your mayonnaise. Yeah. 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 So that was the first when we first met. But years later, because I, I, you pretty much stayed in radio. You were dedicated to it. I was just kind of bouncing around. Mm. So I went off and did other things. You got a real job. I got real jobs. And, uh, but then as, you know, circumstances would have it, uh, about the 92 time frame, uh, I was through with those real jobs. I was just, uh, looking for a work mm-hmm. as I, cause I lo- I gotten laid off. That's what it was. And I wasn't qualified to do anything, <laughs> but kind of run my mouth. So right. I came to TAK originally doing the midnight shift and you and Tom were mornings. Remember that? Yeah. All right. And about that time, you were doing stand up mm-hmm. at the comedy club, uh-huh. right? With uh, with Brian. Right. And you got me. I went up there one night watching you do stand up, and I went, "Well, hell, he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can probably do it." And so that's uh, that whole thing led to you and I eventually. I think the reason I got to do the morning show with you is Tom just got tired of getting up early. Right. It had absolutely nothing to do with my talent. Nothing. <laughs> Or my sense of humor. No, he didn't I mean, I, mean, I think basically I was the guy that could call you at four in the morning and wake your ass up until you get to work. Yes. And sometimes you actually showed up. Yeah, sometimes. On time. <laughs> yeah. But that's when we started doing the morning show. And I think back then, morning radio was just, you know, kind of blah. Uh, you know, Rick, Rick and Bubba were actually working in Gadsden back then. Remember, uh, they, they had not even been syndicated at the time. They were just a small town radio show. Right. And so you and I wanted to do something different. I do remember, and I was called on the carpet by Parker Griffith over this. Uh-huh. Uh, we were probably the first radio show in the Tennessee Valley to cuss on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I said uh, something about you bet your ass. And boy, Parker's like, the FCC is going to, I'm like, mm. over ass? Really? You know? really? So, but that's one thing that made that show fun was you and I, act, we actually wrote comedy bits for that show right and because we were doing stand-up comedy remember we had ron white on i had worked with ron i don't at, remember that yeah uh I mean, the ron you, white? you you probably were late getting in <laughs> some bitch never got to work on time <laughs> um yeah ron and this is a funny story because this and this this shows you where how things happen right i i was doing stand-up and i was uh what was I doing? I was uh, opening in Nashville at Zany's for the week. Okay. Ron White was the headliner. This was back when nobody knew who Ron White was. Including me. I mean, he had, he had dark hair and wore a hat and was actually thinking about getting out of comedy because he'd been doing it for like 17 years and was just burnt out. Mm. And I can remember sitting in the audience watching him thinking, that is the funniest son bitch I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. He, even, even back then. Yeah, he was just he was the did best. Did he ever come here? Well, he did the following week, and in fact, he, uh, you and I, we had him on the morning show when he was here in town because I had picked was I him awake? up. You were never awake, brother. Ever. <laughs> okay, Go but ahead. he was. Did you, did you I mean, take pictures or anything? Uh, somewhere, okay. but yeah, he came, he came. But again, this was did before he, like he us? was. Oh, he loved us. Okay. He. He wanted to know how to get into radio because he was burnt out on comedy. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> Ron, what? To to I'm like, boy, you're in the right place because we're making five bucks an hour. Exactly. You know, this, this yeah, is the lot. Yeah. Mr. White. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, and and so he was asking about doing a morning radio show, and he was tired of being on the road, and and honestly, he was thinking about quitting. And then, I mean, a few years later is when he hooked up with Jeff mm. and Larry and just is now, I think, one of the funniest stand-ups ever. I mean, Ron, but just the nicest guy. He was a big drinker. Even on the morning show, he had a flask in his pocket. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, anyway, so, yeah, he, he came on our show. <laughs> you don't remember. I don't remember yeah. that. Now, I yep. opened up for Jeff. I opened for Jeff I, so uh, did I. for a week. Yep. And then when he came back... The next year, he went to the Civic Center. Instead yeah, of he got big. To, yeah, I, and, yeah. And, that, and the owner of the comedy club I was remember, not happy about that. Yeah, poor Brian. I know. I remember um, the last time that, that Jeff came through the comedy club, I was the MC there. Mm. And he was just there. He was between gigs driving through town and wanted to make $100,000. Yeah. So I remember sitting in Brian's office. Brian was the owner. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff was there. He was going to do, I think, Two shows Friday night and two shows Saturday night. And then he was gone. Right. I remember Brian paying him, I mean, just counting out $100 bills. And I think it was something like $30,000 for those four shows. And this was right before he really hit. I mean, the next year he was doing arenas and, and that sort well, of that thing. Well, that was so. during that time. That's when he, uh, you know, your Redneck If books were coming out. That's when it first, first started hitting. Yeah. 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 So that's probably during that time. Didn't you come up with that? He came up with that concept in Huntsville. I don't know if you had anything to do with it. I don't think so. I'm yeah. not sure. Maybe take credit for it. Okay. Yeah. This after that's, that's, I thought that's, that was you. I don't know for me. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, but that was it such a me. that was such a fun show, and and you you got to meet all kinds of rock stars before I got there, because by the time I got there, I didn't get to meet anybody but Ron well, White. See, and you don't why, remember it. That's why when <laughs> when uh, I was no longer with TAK, it killed Jake because my son Jake because when wrestling would come to town. Mm -hmm. I could take him backstage and meet Hulk Hogan and and Ric Flair yeah. and all the all the big names during that time. And we've got pictures of him and Macho Man and you know all these people. And and so when when okay right after I left TAK, wrestling had come to town. Was in town at the Civic Center and mm -hmm. we could watch it live. Mm -hmm. Okay, at home, and I just it was just killing me that we couldn't be there. And so we just all kind of ignored the fact, you know, it was the elephant in the room. Yeah. You know, you know everybody just didn't say nothing. We're going to watch it. We're going to get some snacks. We're going to do this. We're going to enjoy watching wrestling. Aren't he's we, he's yes. looking at you like you. Yeah. And he, he finally looked at me and goes, you know, Dad, T.A.K. meant the world to us, didn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, right there. Right in the heart. Because well, you, oh, yeah. I mean, not only that, but you went Def Leppard, and yeah, yeah. you put a picture Def on Leopard, Facebook Aeros uh, Aeros a while back, all the people that, that you met. i tell you what was cool is um, Van Halen came, mm -hmm. and I have a picture of me and Eddie. Um, Eddie, listen to Mr. Yeah, Van Halen. Me and, me and Ed. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, Michael Anthony, the bass player, he and I got to talking backstage, and he had on a Mickey Mouse watch. No, I had on a Mickey Mouse watch. Mm -hmm. And he was looking at it, he liked it, and he said he collects them. I went, oh, that's cool. So we talked about that for a few minutes, just that down home people. Mm -hmm. And um, so a couple months later, they were in Birmingham. So you know how we did the we gave away tickets? Yeah. And rented, took a bus down and mm -hmm. all that. We did that. Got backstage again. Saw Michael Anthony again. And I said, you don't remember me, do you? He goes, Mickey Mouse watch. You're not memorable. No, I, that's why I'm sure that's why he remembered me. Let's see. I, <laughs> I was wearing a hat. It yeah. thrown him all off. <laughs> Boy, the sunglasses. Can you take off the glasses? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think I know you. Yeah. You look familiar. What was what was your? I mean, again, you had a, a a longer radio career than I did because you were at TAK. I mean, when it was the rock station, this was really before, you know, FM took off and right. that sort of thing. Um, what's your fondest memories back then? Was it hanging out with the band? Was it getting all the perks? I guess it was all the perks. It, we were out. I did most of the promotions, and so I was out about three or four nights a week. Yeah, you were always out. Yeah, yeah I did, we were, we're no longer married now to my wife. At that time, <laughs> that, that point, I tell you that women don't understand. They don't understand. <laughs> but um, anyway, so that was that was fun. You went out and you know seeing the same people every yeah. Wednesday, every Thursday. That was that was pretty fun. Uh, but I agree with what you said. I think it was meeting all the celebrities and get to hang with them and get yeah. the pictures and the pictures 
you know, like even today. You still have all that? Because you yeah. posted one here a while back. You still got all those pictures? Yeah, I do. I have, you got to post them. I, I do. I, yeah, I have to post those. But anyway, um, I throw one out there every now and then. Um, I got one in, I have a music room at my house. Mm-hmm. That's about half the size. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a music closet. <laughs> yeah, it used to be called a closet before we moved in. <laughs> but uh, I got my picture of me and Ed right there. That's great. Yeah, man. Yeah, po- post all those. One, one of the reasons I wanted to get together with you. I will bring them in next time. And I'll bring them in. in. Yeah, it's and I'll yeah, just hold them up to the camera. <laughs> That's so high tech. <laughs> That's the way I do hey, it. there's this thing called a scanner. Wow. <laughs> I got one on okay, my phone. I'm not, not familiar um, with that. But one of the reasons I wanted to get back together with you after all this time is, number one, we always have fun when we're together. We but just to kind of reminisce on that, because I'm, I'm still in touch with some of the old gang. You know, you are. Well, I am uh, too. But, well, I know. I know. <laughs> you know. Um, but there's just there's so much negative BS in the world. Right. I thought it would be fun for us just to kind of get back together and, and not just reminisce about 30 years ago, but everything that's happened since then. Yeah, I didn't know we broke up. Because now we're, we we're a couple of old men. This we is are. like Lennon McCartney. Yeah. yeah. Which one are you? <laughs> Getting old sucks. I'm the dead guy. I just... Uh, you're, oh, you're the, you know, I'm the, oh, you're, I'm you're the dead and, one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, we I think we can just have a lot of fun. We can sure. just talk about things. We can reminisce. You know, I, I, I have had offers to do political talk radio and i got no desire i am not a fan of politics at all i am not but this either. world i think deserves commentary by a couple of smart ass old guys who yeah. can kind of look at things that are going on and call a call a spade a whatever you're right exactly i know what you're saying <laughs> i know what you're saying so uh are, are, you, are you, you saying we're gonna do this again well it depends on how this is received <laughs> so okay. if if you if you like this just a couple of old guys rambling give us give us a thumbs up give us a comment because um you know i i always enjoy just getting in a room with you and hanging out although i hadn't seen you in years when's the last time i saw you it's been it's been a it's, it's long, been a long, time, long time because you know we all off doing other things my kids are grown now i got a grandson that takes up a good part of my time you know you have a cute silly, grandson by the way that boy. That boy. What's his yeah, name? His name is Archer. Archer, that's right. Archer Ammon McKinney. He Very is cool name. he has he has changed my life. Like I never thought anybody Thank would God change. Somebody has. Boy, I tell you, people have been trying for years. <laughs> but no, it's just it, and that's one of the things that I, you know, I want to talk about is these kids and these grandkids because before he came along, mm-hmm. our plan was as soon as we can get Sierra out of the house. We were gonna head to the beach, or we're gonna go to the mountains, we're gonna go do something. Well, now I'm not going anywhere, right? Because that boy has has anchored me here, and you know my plan is to hit it hard for a couple of years, retire, and become a manny, okay, and teach him all the fun stuff I know. Imagine, yeah, oh, imagine Lord. what I can teach. Jail by the time imagine what I could teach a little boy. Remember the comedian that had the great uh, routine about he wanted to have kids just so he could teach them the wrong words for things. Seems like I remember that. Yeah. Hey, will you hand me that piece of shit? Thank you. You know what I mean? That, that's the whole, the whole, the whole thing. So there's just you know yeah, so much, and of course, time. and of course, his mother and father are like, you're gonna have to filter, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. I do have a bit of a mouth on me. So, but uh, you know, we've been doing this stuff uh, a long time. I think it'd be good to come back and just kind of talk about. What we've done, where we've been, and and well, the world well, as it is, and just do something fun. Will drinking be involved? If you desire it, yes. As long as it doesn't interfere with my crack smoking, I'll be okay. right. Just, we're, just don't we're the just same page. don't dampen my crack, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll and we'll be we'll be, we'll be fine. But uh, yeah, I mean this I, I this is fun. Something we yeah, can do. This and, has been fun. You know, we can uh, we can expand it or contract it as well, you know, necessary. I, on the way here, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, I've. I wasn't nervous, but I was like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? Oh, and we've talked about, we've been here, what, 20, 25 minutes? 20, 25 minutes. And uh, it, things just start popping in your head about yep. things. I mean, yep. you've had no problem with coming up. With you know, it, I, I just want to have conversations. Okay. And, and I think all of it will be good humor. You know, we, we have the ability, if we ever want to, we can stream live. We can take phone calls. We can do all kinds of Let's stuff. Let's say if they want us to. Come back, and if they do, we'll do some live Yeah, stuff. I didn't put a lot of effort into this. One. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know well, how this is going to work so out. I'm just, I'm just so. sitting here talking. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's we, what we'll, we'll do. We'll actually put some effort into the next one. Hey, you know, one of the things that you used to be famous for, what? at least in a very small circle, was your, your top ten list. You used yes. to come up with the best top ten lists 
for the morning show. Yes. And I, the thing I remember, you had one one time and you were stuck on seven. And you're like, can it be a top seven list? And you were very <laughs> pitiful about it. And I'm like, I'm like, no, damn it, Chris, we got to have three more. And you were just sweating bullets. And, and we, would do, we would do the top ten at, I think, 720. Mm -hmm. I would start writing it at like seven. Yeah. You, know? you, were, you were, and I got to be honest with you, no offense, you were the most ill-prepared co-host <laughs> I, I worked with some you were the most but you always pulled it off well, yeah I, I i think i just i waited you know i people would do their stuff the night before and all this yeah. stuff but when you're there in the morning it's a whole different attitude well see i would come in at like midnight and record bits and do this and then i'd have I, you know i'm like i better call it feller <laughs> and you i would have to call you at like four thirty. uh -huh. hey chris uh -huh. you awake <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, this was five days a week, right? And so I get, yeah, I'm a, oh, what? <laughs> you were like, I remember Stuart, Stuart, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I, I would well, call keep you. in mind, yeah. I was out partying, doing, well, drinking. doing the remotes, yeah, promoting yeah. the every station. Night, every, every night, night yeah. every night, every night. Every yeah. Job. And so I would call you every five minutes until you would go, will you quit calling? I'm up. <laughs> and you, I'm like, okay, I'll see you in a little bit. And you would, the show would start at 6, 5.59 and a half. Here was that car pulling into the truck. <laughs> you got your top down? I'll, I'll have a top down. Don't worry uh, about it, man. But the moment that microphone came on, you were there. You were you were, <laughs> ah, you were ready to go, brother. Hello. But you were the most frustrating but fun guy to work with. <laughs> well, I ever worked with him. I'll life. take that. There you go. That's a high compliment because I don't like most people. Yeah, that's so, what I hear. Not that I like you. I'm just saying. I was say, I've never heard you say you <laughs> so, like me. All right, so is this fun? Yes. Might, uh, we'll, we, yes, you I guys like give it. us comments. We'll share this out. If you, uh, if you like the Tim and Chris 30 Years Later tour, and we're not really going to tour. We're going to sit right here. Well, we'll but come to your house. If, if you invite us. If you invite us, we'll yeah. come to your house. That's one of the things we can talk about is that old radio station van. Remember the time you went out wearing just a diaper? You were Cupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we would go to secretaries. Yeah, it was so funny, yeah. Secretaries. It was Valentine's Day, yep. and it was uh, so we'd go. We'd had people uh, write in, and you know, at, you know, for us mm -hmm. to pick mm -hmm. who would show up with flowers <laughs> for their secretary, and we sang a song, but I don't remember what the song was. It's I have no idea. Cupid or something. I yep. don't remember. But anyway, uh, are we? Uh, interrupting you there no 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 i'm just uh, checking uh, to see if president's calling okay he may need a, a one-liner for twitter you just there, you never know yeah but um <laughs> anyway so yeah that was a lot of fun we're yeah. diaper and showed up at these people and and, and christmas was always a really busy time yeah, it was. i never saw you unless you're wearing some kind of elf suit or like, <laughs> well, it must be yeah. christmas because yeah, i'm just chris, for that chris is out there printing money <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy yeah, so, so yeah if you if you like what you see if you like i mean if you want more you want more of this? If you are so starved for entertainment <laughs> that you right. find this funny, if you're homebound or something, you know whatever your, whatever your issue we, is. We also will do hospice services. <laughs> yeah, sure, we I'm doing I'm doing open mic at a hospice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're gonna kill. Yeah, get it? I, 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 I wasn't gonna say it. Oh uh, come it. on! Oh, come on! So all right, man. Well, hey, it's good to see you again. It's good to catch good up. Good to see you. I kiss you, but I can't reach you. Yeah, well, put your COVID mask on and we'll talk. Okay, sounds All good. All right, buddy. We are six feet apart. See, I mean, you can't see we're separated. Well, we re really yeah, we, are, we aren't we? Are. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> we're, we're six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Love you. Bye.